children say that glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. Let him rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. The praises that go from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs and from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. It's all got children singing glory, glory. Children say glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. And so God's people say glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. And so God's children sing and glory. Rica. Canada, Panama, Mama Kingdom Nepal, Puerto Rico, Yama, República Dominicana, Cambodia, Ecuador, Mongolia, El Salvador, China, Nicaragua, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Brazil, South Korea. Honduras, Sri Lanka, Ecuatorial, Republic of the Philippines, Peru, Sierra Leone, Chile, Southern Africa, Swaziland, Goa, Democratic Republic of Congo, Bali, Zambia, Saint Lucia, Kenya. South Africa, Antigua, Liberia, Cooperative Republic of Guyana, United States Virgin Islands, Dominica, Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Republic d'Haïti, Antillas Holandesas, British Virgin Islands, Saint Vincent, Grenada, Guatemala. Colombia, Egypt, Mexico, Ghana, Australia, Germany, New Zealand, Ghana, Czech Republic, Papua New Guinea, Ukraine, Russia, Russia, Solomon Islands, Azerbaijan, Suriname. Bosnia and Herzegovina. United Kingdom. Albania. Christian. It's the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain. It's the song of the forgiven, drowning out the Amazon rain. It's the song of ancient believers, filled with God's holy fire. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful choir. It's all got children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all got children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. There's a
There's a special group of people that we are very honored to have with us this evening. And there are missionary alumni. These are men and women who have given their lives for the sake of the gospel and taken it to the far corners of the world. They're the ones in whom Global Partners has built their ministry now. And the seeds they've sown is now bearing fruit in abundance. And we love you and we honor you. If you're one of our Wesleyan missionary alumni, would you please stand? We want to thank you. Folks, will you give them a great hand? Now stay standing, stay standing. We have a gift for you. So if our team will come and help them have a gift, look around, see where they are so that after the rally, you can go and thank them and congratulate them for investing their lives in global ministry. And uh, you know, we're here tonight celebrating transformed lives and powerful churches, what God is doing around the world. And tonight we've asked you if you'd be willing to share a little bit about what God's doing in your part of the world. For the past three years, the Jesus Film Project has been the main activity of the evangelism department. 30% of the viewers have been converted by God's grace. Among these converts are the Susus, an outstanding unreached people group in Sierra Leone and neighboring country. 14 churches in total have been planted. Four of these churches are planted among the Susus, which is a wonderful, wonderful news for us. 80% of the Susu converts are children. Therefore, the Kamakuya Wesleyan District, in collaboration with the Department of Education, has opened, the, has opened three junior primary schools in the Susu land to accommodate these children. Those who proceed to senior primary school are brought to Kamakue, and they are distributed among Wesleyan families so that they can take care of them in order for them to continue their schooling. A lot of discipleship classes are conducted in order to bring up these kids in the way of the Lord. Another remarkable thing that has taken place through the Jesus film, 17 strong Muslims have been converted quite recently in the Kabbalah district. These men have been baptized and they are now in membership class. A lot has been done Amen. through the great work of the Lord. Your continued prayer is appreciated. Oh. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate your, uh, your prayer support. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you, Brother J.Y. Lord bless you, my brother. Thank you. God is uh, truly awesome uh, in love and mighty in power. I remember one story in Cambodia about Sukha, a Cambodian young man who accepted the Lord and gave his heart to Jesus through the Wesleyan ministry. His new life in Christ had been a wonderful testimony of what God can do to a repentant person. He grew in his faith and walked closely with God. And after a month, he decided to be baptized. It was a wonderful experience to Sukha to be baptized. Uh, during the ceremony, uh, he, was, he was so happy and jumping up and down in the water because he received the completeness of his salvation through water baptism. But after a minute, uh, a number of minutes, we learned that Sukha was missing. We searched for him, and somebody, a young man, approached me and said, Sukha drowned. We searched for his body, and after about an hour, they feast his body. We're all shocked during the time. And when we went to his family and narrated what happened to him, his mother and sisters were, histori were hysterical. They were cursing us. And then one of his brothers happened to be a police officer 
pulled out his gun and aimed to me and said, You will die. But thanks be to God, my brethren, the Lord protected, protected us and God's grace prevails during the time. But the family of these shamans promised us that we will be deported to the Philippines. They want to confiscate our passports and close the church. But still, God's grace prevails. And during the burial ceremony, we are surprised because the family of this young man came and attended the funeral. We're so scared, but we're surprised. And then something happened that before we bury this young man's body, his mother shared a story. Suka's so mother told us that the older brother, uh, the son who was a police officer, was planning to bomb the church that, uh, that very early morning together with all the people, child, uh, God's children in the building. But that midnight, this mother had a dream. She told us that she dreamt hearing the voice of her son telling her not to harm the church, the missionaries, and his pastors for they had all been so good to him. He even assured her that she's already in heaven with Jesus. When she woke up, she immediately called her son, the policeman, and begged him not to bomb the church anymore. She, uh, she told him everything about the dream. So this uh, older son phoned immediately his men who were already at the vicinity of the church ready to bomb the church and told his men not or to discontinue the plan of bombing. It was amazing. It was wonderful to us. It was only a dream. We will tell it's only a dream. But for, uh, for the Buddhist faith, dreams are messages from God. They also believe strongly that spirits of dead person can come back to give messages, warnings, and uh, last-minute requests. For this family, this dream was a message from God, and this voice was really the spirit on, of their son. Just a dream that spared and protected the whole lives of God's children in that church. But God knows everything far beyond our expectation and comprehension. God knows that it's only this dream, only through this dream, that the church will be protected. He is truly marvelous. He is omniscient. He is powerful. As a result of this incident, the members in that church were strengthened in their faith, their maturity grew, uh, grew up, and as a result, after a couple of years, this church was able to plant two more daughter churches, is now our strongest church financially throughout the district, and had produced four pastors that just recently graduated from our Bible Institute last year. And one of these pastors is now in the Philippines, for theological training, for future ministry leadership. Truly, God is awesome. In Psalm 108, 4 to 5, it says, Your great love reaches to the skies, your truth to the heavens. God, you are supreme above the skies. Let all the earth be filled with your glory. We gave to God all the praises and glory tonight. Amen. Richard Lee had left his home in mainland China in 1994, divorced his wife, left his two-year-old daughter, and set off for a new life in faraway New Zealand. In 2002, Richard became a Christian in one of our Wesleyan Methodist churches. And he told me soon afterwards that the Holy Spirit was prompting him that being Christian meant that families should be loving, families should be together. And so he decided to return to mainland China to make contact again with his former wife, who, like himself, hadn't remarried. And so he was sent forth by one of our congregations to romance his former wife. And so he visited Wen Ni, and Wen Ni could see the change in his life, the change that Jesus had brought. And uh, she agreed that, yes, she would marry him again. And, uh, and she'd even come to New Zealand. So this was a great thrill to our congregation and the, the family came to New Zealand and end of last year, Pastor Hong Yi Pan and, and, and myself, we married them again. And then Richard set forth to evangelize Wen Ni and his daughter Michelle. And within two months, 
they had said yes to Jesus and they were baptized. And this made such an impression on our, on our congregation, this transformation story. It also made a great impression on Richard's employer, Stephen, a very wealthy New Zealand Chinese businessman. And he was so touched by what had happened that he decided that yes, he would go on an alpha course. And within a few weeks of starting that uh, 10 week alpha course, he too had said yes to Jesus and we baptized him. Our New Zealand Wesleyan Church was formed in July uh, 2000. In the last 18 months, five new congregations have been formed. Two English speaking, two Tongan, one Fijian. I want to say a special thank you to the Wesleyan family for encouraging us in New Zealand. Uh, we might be Middle Earth, a beautiful country, but we're also in need of evangelization. So thank you to the Wesleyan family, thank you to Global Partners, and thank you especially to the West Michigan District for their loving care and support. It is helping us in our part of the mission field. God bless you. Recuerdo en México en una cruzada. I remember in Mexico in one of our campaigns. Estábamos trabajando con 100 líderes. We were working with some 100 of our Mexican leaders. Y una joven se nos acercó y nos dijo. And one of the young ladies, youth of the conference, por, came to me and said, Por fin los jóvenes wesleyanos se han levantado. At last, the Wesleyan youth have risen up. Ha llegado el momento y eso le agradecemos a Dios por ese tiempo. The time has come for Wesleyan youth and we are so thankful for what God is doing. Que Dios te bendiga. May the Lord bless you. Te quiero ver Cantándole al Señor cada mañana Te quiero ver Con una Biblia abierta en tu ventana Te quiero ver Libre como cada madrugada Mi quisquera te quiero para Dios Quisquera Donde la belleza Se hace un meditar Quisquera Donde el sol es parte De tu palpita Quisquera Donde hay gente buena Para compartir Quisquera, donde la sonrisa es el lenguaje fiel Te quiero ver, cantándole al Señor cada mañana Mi Quisquera, te quiero para Dios Cantándole al Señor cada mañana Mi quisquera Te quiero para Dios Una vida abierta en tu ventana Libre como cada madrugada But we realized a few years ago that we were unable to meet the needs of the world as we wished to. And so eight years ago, the Wesleyan Church at General Conference founded World Hope International. What made it so unique is that, we, that World Hope was set aside as an independent organization connected but really separate from the church. They have a tremendous professional team of people that are working in dozens of countries across the world. But the heart and soul of World Hope International is Dr. Joanne Lyon. Joanne, it's great to be on the platform you. with you. We partner in so many ways in dozens of countries. And 
Tell us what's going on. What's hot right now? Well, all of us look at TV, and I don't have to ask you what's hot. We all know that it's hot in Iraq. And one of the ways that World Hope is able to be in these kinds of countries, and the church can't, is because we're a non-governmental organization, a relief and development agency. But you know, that does not take away the faith that we can proclaim. And God's opened the door in a wonderful way for us to be in Iraq. And the, we're there because you have given, because you have been a part of this. World Hope uh, partners with the Wesleyan Church in a Ministries of Compassion for the World. It's the practical acts of the love of Jesus Christ. We're currently working in 30 countries and also doing programs here in the United States. Constantly we hear about AIDS. And uh, we first heard about it here 30 years ago in the States. Um, and then we began to really see this global crisis that's taking place. Now, as God's people, should we just stand back and say, isn't that terrible? Jesus didn't call us to that. Jesus called us to be in the fray and the immediacy of life. And so that's what we are. So we have started in Zambia. We have 200 Wesleyan churches there. So our goal in three years, we believe that through the Wesleyan Church and World Hope together in Zambia, we'll be taking care of 35,000 AIDS orphans. There's something about that that's part of the difference that Christianity makes, the difference that knowing Christ makes. And we need to show the world that we as His people are going to follow what He says. So it's a joy for us to be able to bring the AIDS Orphan Choir to General Conference. These are selected children that sing, that are here to sing for God's glory, but for you, for us, to connect with them and to know them as our brothers and sisters.
It is a joy and honor and privilege for me to be here. Bosnia and Croatia are the one of the least evangelized countries in the whole Europe. Literally hundreds, thousands of people are going to hell because there are not enough people to tell them that Jesus loves them. God called me and my wife to go over to Bosnia two years ago. I questioned God whether he knew what he was doing. Man, who am I to tell anything to anybody? I don't know how to be a missionary. I do not know how to bring the kingdom of God to the other people. But listen, listen what God has told me. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I want to tell you two things tonight. First thing, that same spirit that was in Jesus is in us. The second thing, can you imagine the, the capacity and the privilege that we have if we would allow Holy Spirit to work through us to reach the world? I want to encourage you tonight to answer the call for the missions. And I will be, I, I will be more happy if you answer for Croatia or Bosnia. <laughs> and if you cannot go, please have persistent prayer and support us in giving in prayers, be a partakers of the things that God is doing in Croatia and Bosnia. I believe that God can do extra, that, can, that God can do extraordinary things to ordinary Wesleyans if they will put trust and faith in him. Don't you believe so? Amen. Amen. Four years ago, I was a Muslim. Then I ran into this American guy and invited me to his house. I saw that they had a New Testament there. I'd heard about it, but never seen one before. I wanted to read this book. They gave it to me, and I started reading it in my home. But it was difficult to understand. I asked my friend, my friend said to me, can, you, can I come once a week to study the Bible with you? This was like a gift to me. And he came every week. And we studied together with my family every week. This was like a holiday every Thursday. We did this for one year. If you really want to, he asked, do you want to ask Jesus into your life? I said to him, I'm not ready yet because I haven't memorized this book yet. He said, you can, no problem, you can read the book every day. At our very first house church, I went to Mick's house and I received Jesus into my life. Thank you. The needs of this world are overwhelming. We wonder what an organization like Global Partners might do, a church like the Wesleyan Church might do. But what we know that when God calls us and equips us, he's going to enable us to do it. People, for us, prayer is not just some kind of nice thing to do, because our people are on the front lines. They're facing demonic opposition every day. They're in a spiritual warfare that affects them spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And we need intercessors who will go before the Father, call down heaven to earth, and believe God for the explosion of the gospel and the protection of his people and the defeat of the evil one. 
Jesus accomplished that in the cross and in his resurrection, but then has given to you and me the glorious privilege of pulling on that resurrection power, calling on that power, and introducing it into the specific situations that our international team faces. It's amazing to us how God's calling our young people, your young people. Since 1993, there's been a 51% increase in missionary personnel. There's more young people whose hearts are burning for the world. There's middle-aged people and even some folk my age, you know, at the end of life, who say, God's touching me. I have a mission. I have a purpose. I can go from success to significance, or I can just start with significance. And so if God's speaking to you this morning, I'm asking that you just won't receive the blessing of this time, but that you and your heart will either commit or recommit to being part of the answer of the Great Commission. It's time to pray. It's time to give. It's time to go so that there can be a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. It's not time yet for us to stand before that great white throne, but we can stand before the Lamb this morning. What we want to do is we want to conclude this festival of nations by worshiping the Lord through communion. It's a time for us to receive the Lord's Supper from the hands of our brothers and sisters from across the world. It's gonna be like that in heaven, you know? And so we want to celebrate what our Lord Jesus has done for us. As you dip the bread into the grape juice, please receive it, please take it and eat it. In remembrance of him who died for you. 